Um, thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be uh, presenting this work. Um, I must say that uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'll be presenting something that is totally different from what you've heard. And it's, uh, uh, it's really a, a small project. I mean, it's, it's basically a prototype. Uh, it's not anywhere near what we've seen before, but um, there are nice perspectives, okay? So I'll be talking about uh, teaching syntax with uh, Clarin, corpora and resources made available, made available through the Clarin infrastructure, okay? Um, so I'll try to convince or explain you to you why we need automatically, automatically generated quizzes because I'll be talking about Moodle quizzes specifically um, and, and then I'll move on to how it's actually done. Okay, so about me, just uh, some words because, uh, I mean, I, I don't know the audience, so it's always good to know who is talking. I'm a uh, corpus linguist, corpus enthusiast, corpus geek, call it whatever you want, uh, with an old school NLP background. I know that's the worst combination ever, but um, that's how, wh who I am. Um, I'm also a member of the, Fl uh, the French Clarin Case Center, uh, which is called Corly, which is a national consortium. And I teach at Université de Lille, and here are the rough um, figures. Uh, and the L1, L2, L3, those are not speakers. Those, those, those are, you know, the uh, uh, first year students, second year and third year. Okay, so those, those are basically the figures, which means that uh, we have, we don't have small groups. We have, mm, well, groups in the hundreds. And uh, one thing to know, maybe that you don't know, is that we don't have any selection in France. Uh, okay, uh, so if, if you complete the baccalauréat, you can then apply to the university. And most L1 students who enroll um, at, uh, in our um, linguistics cur um, curriculum are set to become primary school teachers, French as second language teacher, or speech therapists in that order, um, which means that they didn't really come for linguistics and syntax, okay, even though they have to learn all, all of that. Um, so, <clears throat> why do we need quiz generation? Well, basically, um, I've been teaching syntax for over 15 years now to those uh, students. Um, they're not the same, of course, but uh, I mean, it's globally the same kind of profile. Uh, what can be, I can, well, I've come to realize that um, these students, they struggle with fundamental linguistic courses, um, essentially and specifically uh, syntax, because, uh, well, the emphasis lies on the method, not, you can't just um, get away with learning everything by heart, of course. And I've come to realize that uh, classical chalk and talk, you know, the thing that I used to do earlier um, is, well, it's clearly not enough because, uh, well, we all know that, um, or at least, We've come to realize that our students have even shorter attention spans than before. Maybe there's an explanation that can be attributed to their environments. And also, we've come to realize that uh, textbooks and exercises, well, that's so 1990s, so they really don't adhere to that. Um, so uh, we've tried to come up with ideas and solutions to implement self-paced individualized learning, which is a big word, a big buzzword, and it's not that easy. I first started uh, generating quizzes. Mm, well, at the time I was not aware that you could do that uh, with Moodle because, uh, you know, I was not really uh, into quizzes and I started with some uh, nice application that is called, it's a French guy who did that, um, QSEM Facile. Well, it's really easy because uh, with an Excel sheet, basically you can set up your questions and, and scoring method and you can even correct that at a post hoc when you make mistakes like myself all the time. Oh, I forgot to, okay, that's, that question is too hard or it's too easy. So you can, it's really easy. Um, and that experiment um, made me realize that uh, students' feedbacks were really positive. They liked that. Okay, so they did, to put it in a nutshell, they did like the, my chalk and talk approach, like classical parsing exercises, but they liked uh, quizzes, okay? The problems, of course, is that it's very labor intensive, even if it's easy. Uh, you can get away with a, a set of Excel sheets. It's error prone, of course, if you do it manually. And it's really a one-shot thing because uh, there's no overall progression logic uh, unless you really think about it yourself um, beforehand. And of course, it's not a good practice to send over um, students' responses uh, to a third-party app. 
and it's not really, I mean, in itself, it's not self-paced. It's a nice tool, but it's not, uh, it doesn't give you uh, the self-paced and individualized learning. And it really felt like, like this, like, you know, um, inventing new sets of uh, questions all over again, okay? And then at some point, and I had, a, I don't know if I can call that an epiphany or an aha moment, is that um, my old NLP self uh, re started to realize that you could import, actually import, quiz activity uh, items into Moodle because, and, and those activities are structured with different formats. Uh, you, you probably know that. I don't know if everyone is familiar with Moodle, but. Uh, basically, those are um, text formats, okay? So, ACAN, GIFT, and Moodle XML. Um, and I also started to um, remember that we have tons of manually annotated sentences. Specifically, I'll be speaking about French, but of course, there are other corpora available for other languages. Um, so, there are tons of manually annotated sentences available from the universaldependencies.org platform and available through Clarin. And there's also very nice, uh, convenient pipelines like UDPipe if corpora are not enough. So, I started, you know, thinking, hmm, maybe I can automate this thing because I'm lazy. Um, and uh, yeah, and Conel is also de facto standard format and it's pretty easy to parse because it's basically a table, okay? Uh, but of course, at that point, you need a general syntax, uh, syntactic competence level assessment um, because if you don't have that, you're just uh, generating exercises that you have to structure yourself. And this is the situation that I I'm, I'm find myself in right now. And then, of course, well, even though I like programming, well, you know, the days are they only made of 24 hours. And if you teach and anyway, you, you only have time for that. And then this happened. And I think it's safe to say that everyone was looking for a way to um, provide self-paced learning to their uh, students because uh, I don't know if you experienced the same as us, but uh, in France, the first wave was really bad because we didn't have, um, you know, we, we couldn't even do online um, real-time courses at some, at some points because it was not working. Uh, students, we started realizing that students at home didn't have uh, good connections, etc. So we all, uh, the, the, we were all forced to really come up with creative solutions to that uh, situation. And so, the, the I started really um, uh, creating the first version of the uh, prototype that I have here for generating quizzes based on corpora. Okay, so why do we need those? Uh, the benefits for teachers is that, uh, at least for French, syntactic annotations taken from reference corpora are, are extremely reliable. Um, since the, the corpora integrate different source, different text genres, um, well, we have authentic documents and not just forged examples. Um, you can use them in the very uh, uh, varied uh, settings. For example, you can uh, have quizzes like I'm going to show you, but also pre-syntactic analysis like is this a content word or is this a um, grammar word, something like that. Um, and once you integrate, I mean, um, when you think of, okay, I have a set of questions that is ready to integrate into Moodle, then you can concentrate on the, the actual settings, the, uh, you know, uh, how much time will be allotted to the students, uh, will that be uh, presented in a randomized fashion or not, is this a training or an exam situation, etc. And you get all, all the benefits of Moodle is that, of course, and all the scoring compliant platforms is that you get immediate scoring even if you um, do the uh, offline uh, version which is classical pen and paper you know uh, quizzes and of course uh, the, the quiz sets are easily shareable uh, with other colleagues provided that you use Moodle of course and it makes it uh, easier to um, monitor students responses which makes it may be possible to adapt to the pace of uh, the course, okay? Uh, for students, the benefits essentially are that uh, the sentences are taken from authentic documents, and if you're uh, set to become a French as second language teacher, that's good because um, you'll be exposed to a variety of different uh, grammatical structures. Um, you can uh, get some self-paced learning, especially in learning, in training mode, sorry. 
and you get immediate feedback if, or almost immediate if you take a, um, you know, a, a basic pen and paper quiz on hundreds of, of exercises. And I've, I've realized that it's a little bit like Duolingo. I don't know if your kids are like mine, but um, um, students, my students, they really like that kind of, of situation because they have tons of exercises and you can give them uh, the possibility to, to try a multiple, uh, multiple set of amount of times. And you can give them completion status, badges, or I even considered uh, giving them chocolate to, to rewarding them with chocolate. Okay, so, but that's not a good practice. Okay, so I'll move on to the how it's made. Okay, because of course there are Moodle limitations, but maybe we can talk about that uh, later. So how it's done is basically, um, okay, I have corpora from on the left-hand side, um, and specifically I look at the uh, Cornell U universal uh, annotations, and with um, an idea that's the sort of uh, cloud over there of syntax competence levels. This is an idea for, for the moment. It's not a, really a, a program as in, in itself, but I'm working on that. Um, then I can set the parameters of my scripts to filter, structure, and prepare the quizzes. Okay, and if you want more details about that, you can. Uh, feel free to um, head over to my uh, GitHub repository for source code and ready to use questions in French, of course, but also I've, I've performed some tests for English and, in and Spanish and even Latin. Why Latin? Because, well, if you think teaching syntax is bad, try teaching Latin syntax. Uh, so just a quick refresher on Cornell U um, table separated uh, format. I don't know if you can read that, but basically it's a table. You have the tokens on the, the left-hand side, the, le the lemmas, the part of speech tags, and then all the um, syntactic annotations. Okay, so that's easy to parse, and this is what gives you those nice um, graphs or uh, dependency trees. So I basically take that information and I transform this into um, the uh, gift structured question. I won't go into the details here, but if you want to know more, I'll be happy to uh, answer the questions, but it's basically a transformation, okay? Once you've identified a set of sentences that are um, interesting or useful for the, tr the, um, the teaching purpose that you have, then you can just perf uh, perform a transformation on that. And for the time being, I use GIFT, uh, but of course, uh, I. I'm contemplating uh, moving on to uh, more, uh, I mean, other structuring formats like Moodle, XML, or other formats. The advantage of GIFT is that it's, um, it gives you more control than I can, and it's not as verbose as XML, and so you can share that uh, with uh, colleagues who don't know anything about programming and XML and so stuff like that. So how does it, um, I'll just, I'm just showing you here the uh, rendering of an imported question. Uh, I know it's ugly, but it's not my fault. We've just uh, had an uh, update of the Moodle at University de Lille, and this is how it um, renders my questions. And um, so GIFT is a good compromise because it's easy to generate and it's easy to parse for Moodle, but you don't have much control on how exercises are rendered. and. Uh, for example, if you change, if there's a high-level change in the uh, graphic charter, well, you end up with uh, ugly um, quizzes. And but of course, apart from that, there's, there are also accessibility and readability, readability issues that you can't control. Okay. So, what are the perspectives? Um, I've applied for funding, and this funding request is under evaluation as we speak. So, I hope if my project is um, funded that um, I'll be able to perform quiz generation not via Python scripts, but via a web service, um, and I'll be able to um, uh, generate quizzes not just on parts of speech or function, and not just quizzes, because it's a bit of a limitation. Um, and of course, the priority to have a clear definition of syntax competence level, so that's uh, a major element that I have to develop, and of course, not just for French, even though I'm limiting myself to French for the time being. So the idea is to also overcome corpus limitations by integrating um, text generation into the workflow, 
not only ChatGPT, because ChatGPT is not really good on functions for some reason. Um, and I'm also uh, working on a Moodle-less rendering and scoring app for my quizzes, for the reasons I've just explained. And uh, specific to, to track to have a more accurate uh, idea of how learners respond to each um, question and to make it easier to show and share the quizzes. Okay, so in conclusion, I've presented um, um, a, quiz a quiz generation prototype. Um, uh, if you use that prototype, you'll be able to, uh, by setting parameters, to select the subsets of interesting parts of speech tags or functions. You'll be able to customize how you present the syntactic ter terminology. There's a mapping table. Uh, you'll be able to target uh, specific lemmas or words and to decide how many distractions you, distractions you want. You can generate quizzes for part of speech tags and functions. You can use the already existing questions for French and Spanish and Latin and English. And the pre preliminary tests that I've performed show that it should be relatively easy to switch to any UD-supported language. So there's more to come. Thank you for your attention. Uh, this sounds like a great educational resource for linguistics. Um, it's good to hear that for French, you think that the uh, annotation is highly reliable. Um, this is not the case for many other uh, corpora, even in UD. Uh, and, and I wonder, is it, is it really 100% reliable? What, what happens if there is an occasional error? Do you have any way of sort of catching that or getting feedback for student, from students or something like that? Yeah. Um, well, the, 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 the main, the two corpora that we have for uh, French, uh, you know, syntactic uh, annotations are the French Tree Bank and the Sequoia. Um, the French Tree Bank was, was uh, really made almost exclusively by hand. And I know that because I was one of the students who <laughs> were enslaved into annotating that thing. It, uh, probably the, if there are errors, they are, I mean, it's their own fault. But um, I mean, the, the, those corpora and Sequoia is a bit different because it was, uh, it's, it was more of a semi-automatic annotation. And, but they were all very uh, painstakingly revised and corrected. So I haven't found a real error so far. And I've looked into it. Um, but of course, there are, um, it's more about the annotation um, choices. Like, uh, and, and specifically, I, I tend to avoid uh, sentences where there are multi-word entities because I'm not really happy uh, uh, about how they were uh, handled in, in those corpora, but it's, it's a more general question. I think, uh, I mean, UD has prop, um, nice guidelines, but of course, uh, deciding what is a multi-word entity or collocation is not that easy. So it's always a bit, um, it's not that good. So I tend to avoid those, uh, those um, things. So you mean that like it's it's not necessarily consistently annotated? Well, that's it, maybe, yeah, that's another. Yeah. Well, it's the thing is that in a multi-word entity, it it's I, I think it's it doesn't make much sense to sort of try to annotate one word in particular because because of course it's a part of a larger um, entity. But so that's basically why I tend to avoid those. And um, a good thing is that they are you can spot them before integrating. But of course, there are other choices like, for example, um, if we talk about functions, um, the general guidelines in UD is that there's, um, a, the, the indirect object is limited to pronouns. And I'm not really happy about that for French because that's not the way I want my um, soon to be primary school teachers to think. But you know, that's why I have a mapping table and I have to, uh, some, some manual work uh, to do because I know all the cases that are that could be labeled indirect objects. So I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say is that I haven't really seen mistakes for French. Um, it's more of uh, uh, you know annotation choices which are not really the ones that I want to expose my students to. But of course, if you if you know uh, of mistakes in other corpora, yes, that would be um, a nice um, thing to to because I'm trying to. I'm focusing on, on French, like I said, but I, of course, uh, the idea is to, to be able to switch to any language. But of course, if those languages have not the same quality, then we have a problem, of course. 
Thank yes, you. as a last uh, parting word, so feel free to head over to my GitHub and then uh, I'll be happy to share ideas and, and um, yeah, concepts with you.